vicious cycle of poverty, as we call it, is um, basically explaining the link between poverty, energy access, and earning a living, you know, creating livelihoods in developing countries. And um, we see that in order to earn a living in developing countries, energy access is vital. Um, at the same time, poverty remains the key barrier towards, um, towards energy access. So basically, because of poverty, people do not have access to energy, and without access to energy, they're not able to make an income to, to make a livelihood. To overcome this uh, vicious cycle, you need to look at the, the root causes of energy poverty. And um, the statistics show that um, uh, of the, in the case of electricity, for example, of the 1.3 billion people who do not have access to electricity in the world, that um, around 85% of those uh, live in rural areas. So um, I think it's very important to focus um, the efforts of the international community and of the European Union um, um, to on, on the rural areas um, and on small-scale technologies that allow people in the countryside to actually advance their lives with uh, electricity services that are clean, that are re reliable and that are also sustainable. Often when we talk about these uh, challenges or the hindrances, they are very distinct for electricity compared to cooking and heating and I think the challenge is much larger for cooking and heating. Uh, in terms of the challenge for cooking and heating fuels, I think the main issue is that for most people that are currently dependent on biomass or solid fuels, they are not paying anything in terms of cash for these fuels. They, they have a big cost, but this is in terms of the cost in their health and in, in terms of the cost uh, for the opportunity time that they spend in collecting these fuels. But in terms of money, in terms of cash, uh, they are not paying much for the existing fuels. Therefore, for them to make the transition, they um, need to be able to afford both the recurrent costs of the new fuels, but then also the costs of the new stoves that need to be bought to use the new fuels. So these upfront costs that we call our investment costs uh, for the stoves have also to be made affordable in, in addition to making the fuels affordable. So basically, you need a combination of policies that uh, address the recurrent fuel cost and the upfront investments for the stoves. In the case of electricity, uh, there are fewer barriers on the demand side. I mean, the main barrier is in terms of financing and government commitment. Uh, technologies are there. Um, there are many examples of uh, countries that have achieved very rapid electrification. Um, and so one sees that from these successful cases, it is possible to achieve uh, access to electricity for large numbers of population in relatively small, small amounts of time. So the main barrier there is basically financing. Um, in addition, um, what we've seen is that um, public utilities are traditionally responsible for this uh, process. And in many developing countries, public utilities are now bankrupt because they have been responsible for providing large subsidies and so on and so forth. And therefore, now they don't really have the finances for expanding their grid. Um, so now there has been a more I mean, recent emphasis on looking at off-grid solutions. But there again, there are constraints because you need capacity for developing these off-grid solutions. Uh, for some low population density areas, low demand density areas, they might be a viable option. But of course, uh, putting these systems in place and then maintaining these systems over time requires uh, capacity building.